Tyson Fury, the Gypsy King, a heavyweight champion of the world. Yes! Just got the phone from Sugar Hill Stewart in America. We're going to smash AJ. One round, two rounds, three rounds, done. Can't wait. <laughs> What you're thinking? Does Tyson Fury really believe the shit that he's saying? I think it's a little bit of yes, and I think it's a little bit of no. A lot of it is mind games. And that's something if Anthony Joshua doesn't watch out for, that will be a pitfall for him. Tyson Fury is excellent at the mind games, and he's excellent at pulling off the facade for those that want to fall asleep. You got to keep in mind when it comes to Tyson Fury, he's walking around with his chest poked out because he beat Deontay Wilder. Once again, I've always told people, you got to be careful what you say about Deontay Wilder. Because at one hand, if he's the great bum, the, the, the skillless guy that walked up in a division that wasn't really able to do nothing but smash on some tomato cans, in the same right, you can't turn around and praise a guy like Tyson Fury like he's God for beating somebody like Deontay Wilder, who most people claim for the longest is a talentless one arm fighter. Keep in mind, it's not shocking to beat Deontay Wilder, especially when a guy has lost all the rounds he's been in there with people, even even the people that he's knocked out. So you got to keep that in mind. Something else you got to keep in mind. You also got to keep in mind that Tyson Fury was able to get a fight with a guy that Anthony Joshua couldn't. Anthony Joshua couldn't make a fight with Deontay Wilder. He'd have been on his list to knock over a long time ago if Deontay Wilder didn't run from him. Tyson Fury was able to get Deontay Wilder on a slippery slope simply because he knew what he needed to present in order them to fall into the bear trap. It's one of the reasons why I praise Tyson Fury. Hell of a hustler. Hell of a hustler. Did any of you guys remember back then I said if Deontay Wilder is not careful? Um, Tyson Fury is going to come in here and steal his payday? Notice, that's exactly what the fuck happened. That's exactly what he did. He hustled him out of his spot. That's exactly what he did. He came in and he hustled his ass out of the spot. Regardless of what Tyson Fury want to tell you, his eyes has always been on the money. I know he presents himself like this and like that, but trust me, his eyes has always been on the money. As like most of these guys, but back to him and uh, Wilder. Uh, AJ couldn't get next to Wilder, but Tyson Fury could because he had the right elements to lure him in. Fat, depressed, inactive, you know, looking like he's far gone. Tyson Fury revealed this in a press conference in their first fight. Talking about you only accepted a fight because you thought I was through. You thought I was done. And you're like, little do you know, I tricked your ass. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to show you. And he went in there and he showed him. Nonetheless, it's a beautiful performance. But keep in mind, Anthony Joshua couldn't get Deontay Wilder to go near him with a 10-foot pole. But Tyson Fury could. Good hustle. Another thing you got to bring up. People was trying to get Tyson Fury to fight Anthony Joshua a long, long time ago when Anthony Joshua was still super green. He didn't want to do it. And he said he's not in a rush to uh, fight Anthony Joshua and you guys can't make him. These were his exact words. Adding to the fact he's already came out and said what happened to him in sparring when he fought a very green and still developing Anthony Joshua put him on his ass okay and he openly admitted that all right so here you got a guy who couldn't get nowhere near Deontay Wilder and then you have somebody like Tyson Fury 
who didn't want to go nowhere near Anthony Joshua early in his career. So now it's near and down to the end. The juice, is, the juice is worth the squeeze. It is now worth the risk. You have to line all these things up when you people fall asleep for this. I'm going to do this to AJ. I'm going to do that to AJ. Because leave it up to Tyson Fury in a Tyson Fury way. If that was the case, Anthony Joshua is somebody he would have fought a long time ago early in his career instead of letting him develop like he did. That's the way Tyson Fury moves. Okay? He'd have been got Anthony Joshua out the way. It's the reason why he wasn't going nowhere near him and why he said he's not in a rush and you guys can't make him fight him. It wasn't until Anthony Joshua started moving the needle and started putting up those big numbers. Now the juice is worth the squeeze. Now it's time to cut across the field and beat Deontay Wilder and hurry up and run and get the belt that he's trying to get from Deontay Wilder to become undisputed. And that leaves me the Golden Goose. And that leaves me the retirement plan package. This is why Tyson Fury expressed uh, how he didn't want Anthony Joshua to fight Uzik. You're fucking with my retirement check. He wasn't joking about that. He was serious. It just goes to show you the shit has always been on his mind. Like I said, great hustle. Great hustler. You know, good. Very, very, very cerebral. You know, but... If Anthony Joshua does have a weakness in this, it would be the mental part. Because if the LDBC, as you would call it, could get him to come all the way to America to try to appease Americans for what they were blatantly lying and trying to damage his name for, then the same thing can easily happen again if he's not you know, cautious of it. And uh, the mental aspect is a huge part of the game. One of the reasons is why I always bring up Customato. Why, to me, he's one of the greatest trainers that ever lived. You know, because he understands the mental aspect of it. As far as the physical part. Um, I have no doubt what Anthony Joshua can do. Um, I'm also not to be so uh, asleep that I wouldn't be aware that Tyson Fury could beat Anthony Joshua. It's totally possible. You know what I'm saying? Never bet against the Gypsy King. Both times I did, he proved me wrong. You know, and it's another opportunity for him to prove for him to prove the whole world wrong again. And he very well can do it. The difference is I'm not going into this fight like I did with Andy Ruiz. Just believing Anthony Joshua go in there and just blow through. I'm cautious now. Meaning I, I'm aware of his pros and his cons. So therefore, I can assess the fight a little bit more soundly. And I'll still come out with Anthony Joshua. Still. Because I just don't see it. Now, I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm not saying he can't do it. If if Tyson Fury can do it, I would love to watch it. Be a classic fight. I watch that fight over and over again. If he can go in there and dismantle Anthony Joshua, my hat's off to him. Uh, one of the greatest of his era, no doubt dethroned a lot of guys that people say couldn't dethrone and done it in their own backyard. Tyson Fury would definitely go up there as one of the best that has done it in his time, regardless of no title defenses. Period. Because I know the belief that he has in himself is his strong suit. You know, the mental aspect is where he's strong at. So do I believe he believes this? Like I said, yes and no. Now I know that he's not absolutely ignorant like that. But then again, he is training with Sugar Hill Stewart. And that's something that a lot of people want to overlook. It's the crunk style. It's the style that saved all the heavyweights' career. It's the style that everybody ran to when they took their first loss. Detroit and Emmanuel Stewart was the first place that people came to to improve themselves, to, to get their belts back, to avenge their losses. So it's not like he's just fighting Tyson Fury. He's also going up against that legendary style that helped rebuild so many heavyweights. So that's another thing that I keep in the back of my mind when I think about this fight. Yeah, he's going against going going against up that. He's going against that as well. So, like I said, it's interesting. But nonetheless, whether Fury falls to Joshua or Joshua falls to Fury, 
Both these guys can stand to lose to each other because ain't no shame in losing to either guy. That's why this is a great fight. And that's why it's, it's not even the first fight I care about. It's the rematch that's going to be the one. It's the rematch that's going to determine everything. You know what I'm saying? The first fight is going to determine do you really want to step in there with this guy again? It needs to be if Fury wins or Anthony Joshua wins. That rematch is going to tell it all. You know, and I'm looking forward, more forward to the rematch than the first match. You know, because I just want to see how it goes. But it's a long time coming. And most importantly, I'm interested. And I'm excited for it. And I'm happy for it. And I'm glad for it. And I'm glad that I can't really settle on either guy, even though I pick Anthony Joshua. I'm not above Tyson Fury winning. Just like no nobody's not above having Anthony Joshua win. It's an exciting time. And I'm glad we could be around for it. I just hope everything continues to go smooth. And we get the fight on time, on schedule. Because we've been delayed long enough. But most importantly, at the end of the day, if somebody asks me who wins, it's an easy-ass fucking question. The fans win. There ain't no way that you lose. That's the one thing great about Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury. There's no way that you lose. Even if the guy that you cheer for lose, you still won. This is a win-win for both sides. Just because having these two lock horns is so good for boxing. Anyways, that's my thoughts on it. Bruce Van, I'm out. <laughs>